Hey, how's my sickie? I brought you a special present. What is it? Open it up. A book? That's right. When I was your age, television was called books. This is a special book. It was the book my father used to read to me when I was sick, and I used to read it to your father, and today I'm going to read it to you. Has it got any sports in it? Are you kidding? Fencing, fighting, revenge, giants, monsters, chases, escapes, true love, and miracles. It doesn't sound too bad. I guess I'll try to stay awake. Oh, well, thank you very much. Your vote of confidence is overwhelming. All right. The Princess Bride by S. Morgenstern. Chapter 1. Buttercup was raised on a small farm in the country of Florin. Her favorite pastimes were riding her horses and tormenting the farm boy that worked there. His name was Wesley, but she never called him that. Isn't that a wonderful beginning? Yeah, it's really good. Nothing gave Buttercup as much pleasure as ordering Wesley around. Farm boy, polish my horse's saddle. I want to see my face shining yet by morning. As you wish. As you wish was all he ever said to her. Farm boy, fill these with water, please. As you wish. That day she was amazed to discover that when he was saying as you wish, he really meant I love you. And even more amazing was the day she realized she truly loved him back. Farm boy, fetch me that pitcher. As you wish. Hold it! Hold it! What is this? Are you trying to trick me? Where's the sports? Is this a kissing book? Just you wait. Well, when does it get good? Keep your shirt on. Let me read. Wesley had no money for marriage, so he packed up his few belongings and left the farm to seek his fortune across the sea. It was a very emotional time for Buttercup. I don't believe this. I fear I'll never see you again. Of course you will. But what if something happens to you? Hear this now. I will come for you. But how can you be sure? This is true love. You think this happens every day? Wesley didn't reach his destination. His ship was attacked by the dreaded pirate Roberts, who didn't leave captives alive. When Buttercup got the news that Wesley was murdered, Murdered by pirates? It's good. She went into her room and shut the door. For days, she neither slept nor ate. I will never love again. Five years later, the main square of Florin City was filled like never before to hear the announcement of the great Prince Humperdinck's bride-to-be. My people, a month from now, our country will have its 500th anniversary. On that sundown, I shall marry a lady who was once a commoner like yourselves. Perhaps you will not find her common now. Would you like to meet her? Despite Humperdinck's reassurance that she would grow to love him, the only joy she found was in her daily walks. A word, my lady. We are but poor lost circus performers. Is there a village nearby? There is nothing nearby. Not for miles. Then there will be no one to hear you scream. I just don't think it's right. Kidnapping an innocent girl? Am I going mad? Or do the word think escape your lips? You're not hired for the brains, you hippopotamic landmass. I agree with Fezzik. Oh! The sign is spoken! What happens to her? It's not truly your concern! That Vecini, he can fuss. Fuss, fuss. I think he likes to scream at us. Probably he means no harm. He's really very short on 
charm. You have a great gift for Ryan. Yes, some of the time. Enough of that! Fezzik, are there rocks ahead? If there are, well, I'll be dead. No more rhymes now! I mean it! Anybody want a peanut? We'll reach the cliffs by dawn! Why are you doing that? No reason. It's only... I look behind us and suddenly something's there. What? Look, he's right on top of us. I wonder if he's using the same wind as we are. Whoever he is, he's too late. See? The gifts of insanity! We're safe. Only Fezzik is strong enough to go up our way. He'll have to sail around for hours till he finds a harbor. He's climbing the rope, and he's gaining on us! INCONCEIVABLE! FASTER! I thought I was going faster! You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Whoever he is, he's obviously seen us with the princess, and therefore must die. You carry her, catch her when he's gone. If he falls, fine. If not, the sword. I want to duel him left-handed. You know what a hurry we're in. Well, it's the only way I can be satisfied. If I use my right, over too quickly. Oh, have it your way. You be careful. People in masks cannot be trusted. Hello there. Hello there. Slow going? Slow going? Look, I don't mean to be rude, uh, but this is not as easy as it looks. So I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't distract me. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I, I do not suppose you could speed things up. If you're in such a hurry, you could lower a rope, or a tree branch, or find something useful to do. Mm, I could do that. Uh, thank you. We'll wait until you're ready. Mm, again, thank you. I do not mean to pry, but you don't by any chance happen to have six fingers on your right hand? Mm, do you always begin conversations like this? My father was slaughtered by a six-finger man. He was a great sword maker, my father. And when the Six Finger Man appeared and requested a special sword, my father took the job. He slaved a year before he was done. The Six Finger Man returned and demanded it, but at one tenth his promised price. My father refused. Without a word, the Six Finger Man slashed him through the heart. I love my father. So, naturally, I challenged his murderer to a duel. I failed. The Six Finger Man did leave me alive, but he gave me these. Hmm. How old were you? I was 11 years old. When I was strong enough, I dedicated my life to the study of fencing. So the next time we meet, I will not fail. I will go up to the Six Finger Man and say, Hello, my name is Inigo Mantoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. You've done nothing but study swordplay. More pursuit than study lately. You see, I cannot find him. It's been 20 years now. I'm starting to lose confidence. Well, I certainly hope you find him someday. You are ready then? Whether I am or not, you've been more than fair. You seem a decent fellow. I hate to kill you. You seem a decent fellow. I hate to die. Begin. Thank you. I've worked hard to become so. I admit it. You're better than I am. Then why are you smiling? Because I know something you're wrong with. What is that? I am not a candy. You're amazing. I ought to be back in 
There's something I ought to tell you. Tell me. I am not left-handed either. Turn quickly. I would as soon destroy a stained glass window as an artist like yourself. However, since I can't have you following me either, please understand, I hold you in the highest respect. I did that on purpose. I don't have to miss. I believe you. So what happens now? We face each other as men should, sportsmanlike. No tricks, no weapons, skill against skill alone. You mean, you'll put down your rock, and I'll put down my sword, and we'll try to kill each other like civilized people? I could kill you now. Frankly, I think the odds are slightly in your favor at hand fighting. It's not my fault being the biggest and the strongest. I don't even exercise. Look, are you just fiddling around with me or what? I just want you to feel you're doing well. I hate for people to die embarrassed. You're quick. And a good thing too. I just figured out why you gave me so much trouble. Why is that, do you think? Well, I haven't fought just one person for so long. I've been specializing in groups, battling gangs for local charities, that kind of thing. Why should that make such a difference? Well, you see, you use different moves when you're fighting half a dozen people than when you only have to be worried about one. I don't envy the headache you'll have when you awake, but in the meantime, rest well, and dream of very large women. So it's down to you, and it's down to me. If you wish you're dead, by all means, keep moving forward. Let me explain. But there's nothing to explain. You're trying to kidnap what I have rightly be stolen. Perhaps an arrangement can be reached? There will be no arrangement! And you're killing her! But if there can be no arrangement, then we are at an impasse. I'm afraid so. I can't compete with you physically, and you're no match for my brains. You're that smart. Let me put it this way. Have you ever heard of Plato? Aristotle? Socrates? Yes. Morons! Really? In that case, I challenge you to a battle of wits. For the princess? To the death? I accept. Inhale this, but do not touch. I smell nothing. What you do not smell is called Iocane powder. It is odorless, tasteless, dissolves instantly in liquid, and is among the more deadlier poisons known to man. Hmm. Alright, where is the poison? The battle of wits has begun. It ends when you decide and we both drink, and find out who is right and who is dead. But it's so simple. All I have to do is define from what I know of you. And are you the sort of man who put the poison into his own goblet, or his enemies? Now a clever man will put the poison into his own goblet, because he would know that only a great fool would reach for what he was given. I am not a great fool, so I can clearly not choose the one in front of you. But you must have known that I was not a great fool. I would have counted on it, so I can clearly not choose the one in front of me. You've made your decision then? Not remotely, because I okay and comes from Australia. Everyone knows, and Australia is entirely people with criminals. And criminals are used to having people not trust them. As you are not trusted by me, so I can clearly not choose the one in front of you. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Wait till I get going! Where was I? Australia. Yes, Australia! You must have expected I would have known the powder's origin, so I can clearly not choose the one in front of me. You're just stalling now. You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? You've beaten my giant, which means you're exceptionally strong, so I could have put the poison into your own goblet and trusted on your strength to save you. So I can clearly not choose the one in front of you. But you've also bested my Spaniard, which means you must have studied. And in studying, you must have learned that men is mortal, as you would have put the poison as far from yourself as possible. So I can clearly not choose the wine in front of me. You're trying to trick me into giving away something. It won't work. It has worked! You're giving everything away! I know where the poison is! Then make your choice. I will! And I choose... What in the world can that be? What? Where? I don't see anything. 
<laughs> oh, oh well. I could have sworn I saw something. No matter. What's so funny? I'll tell you in a minute. First, let's drink. Me from my glass, and you from yours. You guessed wrong. You only think I guessed wrong. That's what's so funny. I switched classes when your back was turned. You fool. You fell victim to one of the classic wonders. The most famous is never get involved in a land war in Asia, but only slightly less well known as this. Never go against a Sicilian when death is on the line. <laughs> Who are you? I am no one to be trifled with. That is all you ever need know. Rest, Highness. I know who you are. Your cruelty reveals everything. You're the Dread Pirate Roberts. Admit it. With pride. What can I do for you? You can die slowly and cut into a thousand pieces. Hardly complimentary, Your Highness. Why loose your venom on me? You killed my love. It's possible. I kill a lot of people. Who was this love of yours? Another prince like this one? Ugly, rich, and scabby? No. A farm boy, poor. Poor and perfect, with eyes like the sea after a storm. On the high seas, your ship attacked, and the dread pirate Roberts never takes prisoners. Hmm, I can't afford to make exceptions. Once word leaks out that a pirate has gone soft, people begin to disobey you, and then it's nothing but work, work, work all the time. You mock my pain! Life is pain, Highness. Anyone who says differently is selling something. I remember this farm boy of yours, I think. This would have been, uh, what, five years ago? Does it bother you to hear? Nothing you can say will upset me. He died well. That should please you. No bribe attempts or blubbering. He simply said, Please. Please, I need to live. It was the please that caught my attention. I asked him what was so important to him. True love, he replied. And then he spoke of a girl of surpassing beauty and faithfulness. I can only assume he meant you. You should bless me for destroying him before he found out what you really are. And what am I? Faithfulness, he talked of, madam. Your enduring faithfulness. Now, tell me truly. When you found out he was gone, did you get engaged to your prince that same hour, or did you wait a whole week out of respect for the dead? You mocked me once, never do it again. I died that day. You can die too for all I care. As you wish. Oh my sweet Wesley, what have I done? I told you I would always come for you. Why didn't you wait for me? Well, you were dead. Death cannot stop true love. All it can do is delay it for a while. I will never doubt again. There will never be a need. Oh no! No, please! What? What is it? They're kissing again. <laughs> do we have to hear the kissing part? Someday you'll understand. But since you're sick, I'll humor you. Now, where were we? Yeah, 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 ah, uh, okay. Wesley and Buttercup race along the ravine floor. We'll never survive inside the fire swamp. Nonsense, you're only saying that because no one ever has. It's not that bad, I mean, I'm not saying you'd like to build a summer home here, but the trees are actually quite lovely. Wesley, how did you escape Roberts? Hmm, you see, what I told you before about saying please was true. It intrigued Roberts, as did my descriptions of your beauty. Finally, Roberts decided something. He said, All right, Wesley, I've never had a valet. You can try it for tonight. I'll most likely kill you in the morning. Three years, he said that. Good night, Wesley. Good work. Sleep well. I'll most likely kill you in the morning. It was a fine time for me. I was learning to fence, to fight, anything anyone would teach me. And Roberts and I eventually became friends. And then it happened. What? Go on. Well, Roberts had grown so rich he wanted to retire. So he took me to his cabin and told me his secret. I am not the Dread Pirate Roberts, he said. My name is Ryan. I inherited this ship from the previous Dread Pirate Roberts, just as you'll inherit it from me. The man I inherited from was not the real Dread Pirate Roberts either. His name was Cummerbund. The real Roberts had been retired 15 years and living like a king in Patagonia. Then he explained the name was the most important thing for inspiring the necessary fear. You see, no one would surrender to the Dread Pirate Wesley. I've been Roberts ever since. Except, now that we're together, I shall retire and hand the name over to someone else. Is everything clear to you? Wesley? What about the RUF? 
impressive. Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. <laughs> Was that so terrible? Surrender! You mean you wish to surrender to me? Very well, I accept. I gave you full marks for bravery, don't make yourself a fool. I tell you once again, surrender! It will not happen! Come, sir. What is it? You have six fingers on your right hand. Someone was looking for you. Meanwhile, outside the castle gates, 30 soldiers were guarding the castle in the event Wesley returned for Buttercup. Hello? It's you! True. You don't look so good. You don't smell so good either. Perhaps not. I feel fine. Oh yeah? Fezzik and Inigo were reunited, and Fezzik nursed his friend back to health. He told Inigo of Bassini's death and the existence of Count Rugen, the Six-Fingered Man. Considering Inigo's lifelong search, he handled the news surprisingly well. That's enough. That's enough! Where is this Rugen so I may kill him? He's with the prince in the castle, but the castle gate is guarded by 30 men. How many could you handle? I don't think more than 10. That leaves... 20 for me. At my best, I could never defeat that many. I need Vincini to plan. I have no gift for strategy. But Vincini's dead. No. Not Vincini. I need... The men in black. What? Look, he bested you with strength, your greatness. He bested me with steel. He must have Edwin and Vicini. A man who can do that can plan my castle's onslaught any day. Let's go. He's dead. It's just not fair. Grandma, Grandma, wait. Wait. What did Fezzik mean? He's dead. I mean, he didn't mean dead. Wesley's only faking, right? Do you want me to read this or not? Who gets Humperdinck? I don't understand. Who kills Prince Humperdinck? At the end, somebody's got to do it. Is it Inigo? Nobody. Nobody kills him. He lives. You mean he wins? Man, Grandma, what do you read me this thing for? You know, you're really sick, and you're taking this story very seriously. I think we better stop now. No, I'm okay, I'm okay. Sit down, all right? Okay. All right, now, let's see. Where were we? Oh, yes, in the forest. Well... We Montoyas have never taken defeat easily. Come along, Fezzi. Bring the body. Go away! What? What? Are you the Miracle Max who worked for the king all those years? The king's thinking son fired me, and thank you so much for bringing up such a painful subject. While you're at it, why don't you give me a nice paper cut and pour lemon juice in it? We're closed! <laughs> Beat it or I'll call the brute squad. I'm on the brute squad. You are the brute squad. We need a miracle. It's very important. Look, 
I'm retired. And besides, why would you want some of the king's stinking son fired? I might kill whoever you wanted to miracle. He's already dead. He is, eh? Uh, I'll take a look. Bring him in. I've seen worse. Sir, sir. Eh, huh? We're really in a terrible rush. Eh, don't rush me, Sonny. You rush a miracle man, you get a rotten miracle. You got money? Uh, 65. Shh, shh. I've never worked for so little. Except once, and that was a very noble cause. This is noble, sir. His wife is crippled. His children are on the brink of starvation. You're a rotten liar. I need him to help avenge my father. Murdered these 20 years. Your first story was better. Where's that billows? Okay. Uh, he probably owes you money, huh? Uh, well, I'll ask him. He's dead. He can't talk. Look who knows so much. Well, it just so happens that your friend here is only mostly dead. There's a big difference between mostly dead and all dead. Please, open his mouth. Now, mostly dead is slightly alive. Now, all dead, well... With all that, there's usually only one thing you can do. What's that? Go through his clothes and look for loose change. <laughs> hey! Hello in there! Hey! What's so important? What do you got here that's worth living for? True love. True love! You heard him! You could not ask for a more noble cause than that! Sonny, Sonny, uh, true love is the greatest thing in the world, except for a nice MLT, a mutton lettuce and tomato sandwich where the mutton is nice and lean and the tomato is ripe. And they're so perky. I love that. But that's not what he said. He distinctly said, to blave. And as we all know, to blave means to bluff. So you're probably playing cards and he cheated. Liar! 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 Get back, witch! I'm not a witch, I'm your wife! And after what you just said, I'm not even sure I want to be that anymore! You never had it so good. True love! He's a true love, Max! Don't say another word, Valerie. He's afraid. Ever since Prince Humberdick fired him, his confidence is shattered! Why'd you say that name? You promised me you would never say that name. What? Humperdinck? <laughs> Humperdinck. Uh, Humperdinck. Ooh, ooh Humperdinck! Uh, yeah, 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 I'm not listening! Humperdinck, Humperdinck, Humperdinck! A life expiring and you don't have the decency to say why you won't help! Nobody's hearing nothing! Humperdinck! Humperdinck! Ah, Humperdinck! Yeah. Humperdinck. Right. Hey, okay. But this is Buttercup's Humperdinck. true love! Humperdinck. If you heal him, he will stop Humperdinck's wedding! Humperdinck! Humperdinck. 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 Wait, Humperdinck. Uh, shut up, shut up, wait, wait. I make him better, Humperdinck suffers? Humiliations galore! That is a noble cause. Give me the 65, I'm on the job. Woo! That's a miracle pill? The chocolate coating makes it go down easier, but you have to wait 15 minutes for full potency. And you shouldn't go swimming after for at least, what? Uh, yeah, an hour. Yeah, yeah, an hour. Yeah, a good hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for everything. Okay. Bye-bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. You think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye-bye. Oh, bye. Aniga, there's more than 30. What's the difference? We've got him. Help me there. We'll have to force feed him. Has it been 15 minutes? We can't wait. The wedding's in half an hour. And we must strike beforehand. Tilt his head back. Open his mouth. How long do we have to wait before we know if the miracle works? Your guess is as good as mine. I'll beat you both apart. I'll take you both together. Guess not very long. Why won't my arms move? You've been mostly dead all day! We had Miracle Max make a pill to bring you back. Who are you? Are we enemies? Why am I on this wall? Where's Buttercup? Let me explain. Mm, no, there's too much. Let me sum up. Buttercup is marrying Humperdinck in a little less than half an hour. So all we have to do is get in, break up the wedding, steal the princess, make her escape after I kill the six-finger man. That doesn't leave much time for dilly-dallying. You just wiggled your finger! That's wonderful! I've always been a quick healer. Now, what are assets? Your brains, physic strength, my steel. That's it? Impossible. If I had a month to plan, maybe I could come up with something. But this... You just shook your head! That doesn't make you happy? My brains, his steel, and your strength against 60 men? And you think a little head jiggle is supposed to make me happy? I mean, if we only had a wheelbarrow, that would be something. I saw one earlier. Well, why didn't you list that among our assets in the first place? What I wouldn't give for a dark cloak. There, we cannot help you. 
Well, let's do. Hmm. All right, all right. Come on, help me up. Now, I'll need a sword eventually. Why? You can't even lift one. Not true, but that's hardly common knowledge, is it? Now, there may be problems once we're inside. together today. Marriage, the blessed arrangement, the dream within a dream. Stand your ground, men! Stand your ground! Stand your ground! I am the Dread Pirate Robert! There will be no survivors! My men are here, and I am here, but soon you will not be here. The Dread Pirate Robert takes no survivors. All your worst nightmares are about to come true. When love, true love, will follow you forever. The Dread Pirate Robert is here for your soul. Treasure your world. Skip to the end. Have you the wings? Stay where you are. I said, stay where you Here are. comes my Wesley now. Your Wesley is gone. Then why is there fear behind your eyes? Give us the gate key. I have no gate key. Fezzik, tear his arms off. Oh, you mean this gate key? And you, Princess Buttercup. Man and wife, Sam, man and wife. Man and wife. Squat the bride away, I'll be back. He didn't come. Kill the Dark One and the Giant. Believe the third for questioning. Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. You must be that little Spanish bat I taught a lesson to all those years ago. It's simply incredible. You've, have you been chasing me your whole life only to fail now? I think that's the worst thing I've ever heard. How marvelous. Oh, Wesley, darling, Wesley, why won't you hold me? I've been mostly dead all day. Oh, Wesley, will you ever forgive me? Oh, what hideous sin have you committed lately? I got married. I didn't want to. It all happened so fast. It never happened. What? It never happened. But it did. I was there. This old man said, man and wife. Did you say, I do? Well, no. We sort of skipped that part. Then you're not married. If you didn't say it, you didn't do it. Wouldn't you agree, your highness? A technicality that will shortly be remedied. But first things first, to the death. No. To the pain. I don't think I'm quite familiar with that phrase. I'll explain, and I'll use small words so that you'll be sure to understand, you warthog face buffoon. That may be the first time in my life a man has dared insult me. It won't be the last. To the pain means the first thing you lose will be your feet, below the ankles, then your hands at the wrist. 
Then your nose. And then my tongue, I suppose. I killed you too quickly in the last time. A mistake I don't mean to duplicate tonight. I wasn't finished. The next thing you lose will be your left eye, followed by your and right. my ears! I understand. Let's get on with it. Wrong! Your ears you keep, and I'll tell you why. So that every shriek of every child that's seeing your hideousness will be yours to cherish. Every babe that weeps at your approach, every woman who cries out, My goodness, what is that thing? will echo in your perfect ears. That is what to the pain means. It means I leave you in anguish, wallowing in freakish misery forever. I think you're bluffing. It's possible, pig. I might be bluffing. It's conceivable, you miserable, vomitous mass, that I'm only lying here because I lack the strength to stand. Then again, perhaps I have the strength after all. Drop your sword. Have a seat. Tie him up. Make it as tight as you like. Good heavens, are you still trying to win? Hello, my name is Inigo Mantoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Hello, my name is Inigo Mantoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Hello, my name is Inigo Mantoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Stop saying that. Offer me everything I ask for. Anything you want. I want my father back, you antipatico perro. Where's Fezzik? I thought he was with you. No. In that case... Help him! I knew it! I knew he was bluffing! I knew he was bluffing! Anigo, where are you? Ah, oh, there you are. Anigo, I saw the prince's stables and there they were. Four horses. And I thought there are four of us. If we ever find the lady... Hello, lady. So I took them with me in case we ever bumped into each other. I guess we just did. Fezzik, you did something right. Don't worry, I won't let it go to my head. You know, it's very strange. I've been in the revenge business so long, now it's over. I don't know what to do with the rest of my life. Have you ever considered piracy? You'd make a wonderful Dread Pirate Roberts. They rode off to freedom. As the dawn arose, Wesley and Buttercup knew they were safe. The wave of love swept over them, and as they reached for each other... What? What? Nah, it's kissing again. You don't want to hear it. I don't mind so much. Okay. Since the invention of the kiss, there have been five kisses that rate the most passionate, the most pure. This one left them all behind. Now I think you ought to go to sleep. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So long. Grandma, maybe you could come over and read it again to me tomorrow? As you wish. <laughs>